Hello everyone, Sky Pikmin here and welcome back for another episode of the Analyst Desk. Today we will talk about round 14 of the 2019 Manufacturer Series in the FIA Gran Turismo Championships, which will be held on uh, Lago Maggiore, which is an original track for GT Sport that was designed by Polyphony and that is a fictional track that is located in Italy. That what they said in the game. So um, first we're gonna analyze the race settings and talk about them and what we can learn from them. Then the track analysis and finally the cars tier list for this race in which I'd say which car should perform well and which car should have uh, some struggles in this race. So let's get started with the race settings. So the race will be in uh, GR3, which is the equivalent of the FIA GT3 in real life. Then uh, we'll have 8 laps for this race, which should lead to uh, an about 15 to 16 minute race. So that should that means that there will probably be some aggressive driving because people will try to get us uh, as far as possible in the early stages of the race to get rid of all the traffic and to be able to try and catch someone at the end of the race. Then the slipstream is on real, damage on light, uh, that is pretty standard for any manufacturer series uh, GL3 race. Then the tires allowed are odd and only odd, so uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. The balance will obviously be set on. on. Then uh, the start type will be rolling start, fuel consumption times 3 and tire wear times 14. So what can we learn from these settings? First, this is an 8 laps race, so as I said before, there should be some aggressive driving and you should be prepared for it. So when you train, make sure that the lobby you're in is set correctly with all the settings that will be used in the FIA race. And then you should train races, but also qualifying because you should start obviously at as close to the front as you can. But then, yeah, try some races with drivers that are roughly the same level as you, so you can see where people are going to try and overtake, where you can defend, where you cannot defend, and where it's not possible to try to overtake someone because it's too risky. Then, um, the fact that all the only tires uh, allowed are odds should lead to a no-stop race, obviously, so... Train yourself to manage your tires, to have them in the best possible shape for, let's say, the last three or two laps, because that's when you will be able to make a difference. Because if someone got the same pace as you but uses the tires much more, then you'll be able to catch him or overtake him uh, at the end of the race with fresher tires. Then we will move on on the track analysis. So um, first, uh, this track is used um, in reverse for this race. So that means you're going to turn left more than you're going to turn right. But this track is made uh, in a way that there is a lot of left-handers and a lot of, a lot of right-handers. So that should help you keep your cars keep your car balanced as your tires should be worn uh, quite at the same amount on each side. So for example, you would not have uh, one side that is completely destroyed and the other side that is completely fresh that will unbalance your car. On this track, you should have a balanced car uh, all race long due to the fact that you turn due, that you will turn on both sides. So use that to your advantage, obviously. Um, then, as uh, same thing as the last time, I highlighted some uh, spots on the track. So overtaking spots for me are uh, turn one, then the V-shaped corner that we are going to discuss a little bit later on, and then the corner at the beginning of the last sector 
because uh, there are corners that are located just after straights and uh, quite hard breaking points. So that's the that these are the corners where overtaking should be prioritized. Then in black, the lightweight handling parts. So that should help cars like the Toyota FT1, for example, that will take advantage on that. And on in yellow, the parts where engine of the car will be um, giving you an advantage or a disadvantage if you don't have a good engine. So there are three main straights on this track. That's pretty obvious. So. I I can I I showed you them on the on the graphic. Then uh, in green uh, this time I highlighted some important parts parts of the track that I will be giving advices uh, to you to help you uh, going faster in these parts. So um, first we have this V shaped I'd say turn. So. This turn, when you're under braking, goes uphill, and when you're uh, releasing the power uh, after the corner, uh, it goes downhill. So what I recommend is that you don't go too early on the apex, because you'll compromise the uh, exit of the corner, uh, and it's not a great thing to do on this corner because there is a very long straight just after it. So uh, you should go a little bit wide on the braking and then uh, cut in the apex uh, right after to exit the corner with as much speed as you can because the, sp the straight that is just after is very long so it will help you gain some time over your lap and then just after this straight we have one left under one right under and then we have the S's so uh, in this track there are uh, the track limits sometimes you can go over the curbs so I recommend you try some different lines and see where are the real track limits that is to say where uh, are you getting penalties so um, yeah uh, just try some lines and try to turn as less as possible to keep good speed so if you can go over the curb or a little bit uh, in the in the dirty part of the left hander uh, I would recommend you try that and if you can do it on the race then try to do it to gain some time here because it could definitely make uh, some difference and even more in qualifying where some tens could uh, could win you some like five or six spots on the grid. Then uh, I'll finally show you the tier list for this race. So in my opinion the tier list for this race is uh, as uh, it shows. Uh, I've put Renault and Alpha in B tier because I, I think that their GR3 cars are not that great and that they sh for example the Renault should struggle at the end of the race with the tires then in A tier I've put Audi, Peugeot and Lamborghini uh, Audi is probably the car that can qualify the best uh, but then in race it will maybe struggle against some cars that are managing tires better than than the R8. And then in S tier I've put Lexus, Mercedes and Toyota. Uh, I could have put BMW but I'm in my opinion it's it's outclassed by the Toyota so um, I've decided to talk about the Toyota instead. So Toyota got two really great uh, GR3 cars. The FT1 is good in high speed corners and link parts a little less in the straights and the Supra is pretty much the opposite it's very good in the straights but it's also quite good on the handling parts due to the fact that it's a pretty short car um, then uh, the tires are uh, pretty well on the FT1 uh, in every race and the Supra uh, should struggle a bit more with the tires but it has a very very good speed so it could compensate for that Lexus got two great GR3 cars as well, and Mercedes got the um, 
the newer SLS, I would say, because even if it's even if it's not uh, really new now, but uh, yeah, the the newer car is one of the best GR3, I think, even if it's quite understeery. Uh, then for A tier, we have Audi. So yeah, as I said, uh, the R8 should be very good on pace, but should struggle a bit in the later stages with the tires. Same goes for the Lambo, um, but it sh maybe will not be as fast as the R8. Uh, for the Peugeot, I've based my opinion around the VGT because that's what uh, the top players are currently using. Uh, so I'm talking about uh, my teammate Lewis and his teammate that was also mine in a world tour, uh, Outlaw Quadrant from uh, North America. So in my opinion, um, uh, the car should be quite good on, sp on pace but should struggle with the corners so uh, we'll see how it goes if they decide to go into that race because remember that uh, manufacturer series and I'll end the video on that manufacturer series is all about uh, using your car to its max potential and managing to do well even if your car is not good at the track so when you have a great track for your car you should train a lot to maximize this potential and get as much points as you can and if you need some other points then you can enter the races where your car is not that great and try to um, uh, I would say uh, not make any mistake get as much as you can out of the car to score some points even on the, on the tracks where your car is not that great good because that's the point of the manufacturer series obviously some cars are going to be better than some others at a given track but if you're good enough and if you train enough you can uh, win against the better cars if you're in a let's say for example someone in in the Audi if he manages to use his car to its full potential that is to say qualify qualifying in pole and then defending uh, to the end uh, then he could win this race uh, even against a Lexus or a Toyota so um, yeah let's go on the track train yourself and uh, try to be the best in the races on the Wednesday and Saturdays so yeah that's what I had to say about uh, this video um, I hope you will enjoy watching it and uh, I'll probably see you on Monday for the next episode in which we'll be talking about round uh, 14 of the Manufacturer Series. So hope you enjoyed and uh, see you on Monday.